Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a fabulous crowd we have tonight. Thank you so much for taking time out to come and learn about our community, because that's exactly what it is, our community. So welcome. We appreciate each and every one of you. And at this point, I will turn it over to our MC, Mr. Bob Freeman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a little housekeeping before we start so that everybody knows. You ought to clearly be able to see where the exits are. So if something happens, the fire department, or the if fire gets started, the fire department would intentionally start with the fire started. <laughs> <laughs> or something were to happen, then, then exits just follow us uh, very patiently, calmly out the door. I'll be the first one going, so just try to keep up. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be good. There are cookies and drink and punch that's just out these doors, and they're, they're for everybody and anybody that wants them. And so free, feel free to help yourself to that. And out these doors and up your right to that hall, there's men restrooms on the left and women restrooms on the right. And please try to not get too confused, JR. I mean, uh, anybody on which restroom. <laughs> My name is Bob Freeman. I want to welcome you. This is the 24th year that the city of Eulis has held town hall meetings uh, within the city. So we were open and trying to be transparent before open and transparent was even popular. Uh, so we, we appreciate you being here. There are a lot of faces here I've not seen before uh, and so we're going to get to know each other hopefully tonight and I'll tell you they, they're going to make fun of me but this is my pat deal. My name is Bob Freeman. I am the only Bob, I believe, I was the only Bob at the police department for 35 years. I think I'm the only Bob still in the city, I wouldn't swear to that. But it's real easy. If you call the city of Eulis and you need something and you can't get anybody else to help you, and you say, let me talk to Bob, I promise you, somebody will send you to my phone or my desk. And that's fine, and that's great, and I love to try to be involved and try to help you. So that if you remember, if you don't remember anything else tonight, remember that the mayor tells me it's difficult to spell the name, but it's the same forward and backwards. The <laughs> pretty pretty easy thing to do. Uh, let me introduce the staff up here, and I won't do it in order. So I'm going to ask everybody that's on the panel up here to please raise your hand. We have Mayor Linda Martin, Mayor Pro Tem, Pro Tem Tim Stenifer. Councilmember Jeremy Tompkins, Councilmember Eddie Price, Councilmember Linda Eilenfeld, Perry Bynum, Councilmember Perry Bynum's not here tonight. He's got some illness in his family and he has taken care of two of the lady loves of his life and so our thoughts and prayers are still with him. And Councilman Zimmer couldn't be here because he's on vacation. <laughs> City Manager, Loretta Getchell. Our Assistant City Manager, Chris Barker. The guy that trained me. So everything that's good, give him credit. Everything that's bad, give him credit. <laughs> Chief, your Chief of Police, Mike Brown. Fire Chief, Wes Rhodes. Uh, Ray McDonald, planning and uh, Parks and Recreation. I was part of the Oh, I got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Collins, our planning and development, and and last week he won more awards than they are going to give out at the Oscars. I will just tell you that. <laughs> Throughout Tarrant County, somebody was giving him an award last week, and so the building that's under construction. That's just Mike's office. We had to build a bigger <laughs> office so that there would be a place to put all of the, the accolades in Mike. It's true, Mike. You know it's true. Uh, and then around the room, and I normally will try to mention them all, but I'm not even going to try to mention them all. If you are a city director, staff member, somebody with the city that's here to, number one, hear what, what our citizens want and think, but are here to help them, would you just kind of raise your hand and wave just a little bit? And you'll see they're they're all over the room. So uh, Lieutenant Padley, 
he's trying to be incognito, six seven, <laughs> three hundred plus pounds in a blue uniform. But he, he rose, 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 rose his hand, raised his hand. He is back there. So the reason I'm telling you that is we're going to try to get out of here by eight thirty because some of us, as I get older, go to bed about nine. <laughs> but we are here until you walk. So you got your questions answered or you've at least got to have your say and maybe we're looking up the answer to that. We are here for you and we will do the very best we can to try to answer or any concerns, questions, comments, accolades that you may have, money that you may bestow on us, anything that you feel like you want to do. I also want to let you know that we are, again, this is the second year that we are recorded and both audio and video. So. Try not to pick your nose, because you know that will be the time the camera is on you. And if you've got a question or comment, we're not going to make you step up. We're going to try to bring a microphone to you. And uh, and then if if we still if I still don't believe that everybody can hear you really well, then I'm going to probably paraphrase and repeat the question so that we so that everybody knows what the question is. If it starts to bog us down, we are recording it, video and audio, but if it starts to get to the point where it's keeping us from answering your questions or whatnot, we're going to quit worrying about it, and we'll just go up and answer some questions. All right? Everybody understand? Anybody got any questions before we start? All right. Great. Uh, when we do get to this, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity. I'll ask you to be polite. The thing I love about the city of Hewlett, and I'll be 36 years next month, is it's much more polite than my 39-year marriage with my wife. Everybody is polite, and so we'll ask. I'll ask you to raise your hand. I will get to you. I promise I'll get to you. You don't have to wave hands. You don't have to do like Jeopardy and just keep clicking the button. Eventually, I'll get to you. Everybody up here can see it, so they'll make sure that I get to you, and we'll try to get you an answer. But we're going to be polite. And so please don't try to talk over somebody that's answering. Uh, try to limit your deal to one question. We'll try to answer that. If there's a follow-up question, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. But everybody may have questions or concerns. Somebody else may have a question that will answer it for you. So let's give everybody an opportunity if we can. And again, like I told you, we will stay and answer everything we can for you. So <coughs> any questions before we start? The one thing I didn't tell you is if you've got to go to the restroom, please do not raise your hand to wait for me to point out. <laughs> Just go. We'll call you out. We may mention it as you're walking out the door. That's all right. All right. With that, Mr. Barker, I think you are going to give us our first thing started, correct? Absolutely. It's yours. Scott, we put that slide up there for me, Will. I just would direct your attention to the screen. There is a website up there that you might want to jot down and take a picture of. That is drivemidtown.com. That is the website that will keep you fully informed on the State Highway 183 reconstruction project uh, right out here. That will pick up at the 121 split there at the border of Euless in Bedford. It will head eastward all the way through our city and then actually goes into, into Dallas as well. And I want to give you just a quick update on where that project is. I know we're all aware of it because you can see things. That work? Look at that. Because you can see things out there as you drive that corridor uh, every day. So let me give you just a couple bullet points on where that is. Again, the project is reconstructing the freeway, the existing freeway, and uh, service road lanes, and adding two manage lanes or toll lanes, one in each direction. So one additional lane in each direction, that is a toll lane. Uh, we are not losing any of our existing counts of three lanes in either direction or service roads in either direction. Currently right now, uh, as you're probably aware, they're acquiring right away. The reason I say you're probably aware of that, if you notice the main street, the, uh, on Main Street, the Wendy's has closed. Uh, you'll also notice the Long John Silver's on the eastbound service road has closed. And those businesses have closed because they have been made an offer by TxDOT uh, for their business because of how it is affected by the project and they've settled with TxDOT and it's in, in their particular case as part of that settlement, they're closing their business. 
Uh, TxDOT is working all throughout the corridor, acquiring right away. And people always ask, you know, what's going to be left and who's leaving and those things. We know, obviously, Wendy's and Long John Silver's are, are already closed. Both of them have expressed a desire to try to stay in the area, but at this point in time, we don't know where that may be. Um, if you are up there on the eastbound service road uh, near Main Street, the McDonald's uh, will be remaining. It may look a little different. It may have some uh, modifications done to it. They intend to remain. The Waffle House and the Taco Bueno will also remain. The Water Burger, in his our understanding, will not remain. And I believe, Mike, they've expressed interest in staying in this area in the community as well. So they're going to actively be pursuing uh, a redevelopment opportunity, hopefully in that in that same era, uh, area. Also, the Para Car Care right there on the corner, uh, about the triangular-shaped lot next to the Taco Bueno, uh, will be staying as well. What you're going to notice in early 2016 is they're going to begin shifting traffic around to allow for utility relocations. And the goal in this project is they will do all the relocations of water, sewer, drainage, electric prior to starting actual roadway construction. So again, they're acquiring that right of way now. They will then begin shifting the utilities. And we really think that the utility relocation work we're being told will start in early 2000. Uh, 16 into the spring and go on into the summer. As part of that utility work, the eastbound State Highway 183 off ramp to Hector Drive goes away. So if you are eastbound, you can no longer exit directly to Hector Drive. You will have to exit at FM 157 and continue on the eastbound frontage road to Hector Drive. You'll still be able to turn and come under the freeway uh, here to City Hall. The other thing that everybody's going to notice is the pedestrian bridge going right over here to the junior high is going to go away as well. And they will be taking that bridge down literally as soon as school is out uh, this spring uh, to get that. Obviously, they have to work partly on the school property, so they're trying to do that when the kids are out of school. And they'll be providing a, an alternate pedestrian access route to that bridge. But I do want you to know that pedestrian bridge does not go back. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about that. The city, uh, that, that's not part of the city decision, that is a TxDOT decision, but the city has worked with the school district and TxDOT to uh, try to figure out some different good pedestrian safe routes to school for the children and also improve. If you're familiar with that school, there's a lot of folks that drop the kids off and they use the service road as a drop off lane and they actually park on the service road. It's kind of a little bit of a dangerous situation. So we're going to be doing some improvements. The state's going to be doing some improvements on the school district's property in conjunction with the school district to make that a safer and better situation. The big one that everybody always wants to talk about is the Main Street Bridge. And that bridge will be actually completely demoed and go away and it will be rebuilt. And it will, if you're, if you're familiar with that bridge now, if you're traveling either uh, north or south on Main Street, there's a slight jog at that bridge until you, until you uh, meet up with the other lanes. That jog, if you will, will go away and that will be a straight shot when you're traveling on Main Street with the new bridge. In addition, there will be some Texas U-turns on that bridge. Uh, that bridge is of such an age that it is impossible for them, and you've seen in some of these other projects <coughs> where they tear down a portion of the bridge and rebuild, and then they leave a portion open, <coughs> portion open. That just will not work on this aging bridge. So it will actually be completely shut down. And that time frame, they are telling us to expect as much as 18 months for that bridge to be out of service. As of today, they are scheduling that for the spring of 2017, so roughly a year from now. And the city will be working with TxDOT in Southgate and many of our local businesses and the Methodist Church is infected, obviously, on just alternate routes uh, to be able to get places during that, during that time. Uh, that also will affect our police and fire as they respond to emergencies. And both the chiefs have been already planning and working on that at brief council. You guys want to talk about that a little bit later? You can, but we're aware that that obviously there's a fire station there on uh, South Main Street, and so with that bridge out, that's going to change how they may uh, respond to different emergency situations. But I want you to know that we're already planning on that well over a year in advance, and how to how to mitigate that, to make that situation uh, the very very best that it can be. One important note is that they're going to work on the frontage roads and the main lanes at the same time, and that is in an effort to be in the corridor for the smallest amount of time and make the improvements as quickly as they can to finish the project and get out. They have a substantial completion of the summer of 2018, uh, which on one hand sounds a long ways away, but if you think about the amount of work that's going to be done out there, that is a really, really short time 
that they project to be in that corridor. So uh, they're still saying at this point in time that they would uh, intend to complete the project at that time. Southgate Constructors is uh, a renamed group, but it's the same folks that did the project up in Grapevine under the name Northgate Constructors. And if you're familiar with that project, they actually finished ahead of time uh, on that project, and that is again their goal here. So be happy to answer any questions you might have about that. We need you to know a little bit about what we know. And then really this drivemidtown.com website can answer a lot of questions. There are uh, Facebook and Twitter feeds that you can sign up for to get up to the minute traffic uh, movements or lane closures and, and news. From the city's perspective, we will be uh, linking our website to the Drive Midtown site and trying to push all that information to a central location so that there's not any uh, misinformation that we're all giving out the same information. What about 157? So 157 is within the scope of this project and they will be doing some improvements there. They will not be replacing the bridge at 157 for extra drive. They will be improved, not a total, total replacement. And one of the things we're working with Southgate and Texon on is obviously when the Main Street Bridge is completely gone, well, 157 and Hector become very, very important for traversing the city. So trying to coordinate how they can, uh, can do that and keep us moving as efficiently as possible. We have suggested to them, and I do not want anybody to take this as a promise, that because they're not starting the Main Street Bridge until spring of 2017, uh, is there a possibility maybe, for instance, to do improvements at Ector Drive prior to that? Uh, and so Ector Drive has already been improved once you start the Main Street Bridge or 157. So we're, we're having those kind of conversations, uh, conversations with them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned the exit off of Edgar on down Yes, ma'am. Will it reopen or is it just going to be a temporary closure? It will not reopen. Mm -hmm. So she asked me about that I had previously mentioned the eastbound 183 exit to Ector Drive that exists today, uh, dedicated, if you will, Ector Drive exit. Uh, it was closing, I had said, as part of the utility work. That exit will not open. Again, at the, at, the, at the completion of the project. So you would exit at <coughs> 157 to come to Extra Drive. Uh, it is somewhat similar, I guess, as it is today on uh, westbound. You exit Main Street, Extra Drive to come, come to Extra Drive. And it would have similar signage. I mean, it will be well signed, but it will be different than, than what we're all used to. Great. Yeah, and that is, that's dictated by the fact that the improvements at 157 and the rest of the road and the traffic braking that has to happen the on-ramp from 157. If you're eastbound, if you come off 157, you go eastbound on the service road, there's an on-ramp up to the freeway now, basically in front of the Taco Cabana or Starbucks area. That actually moves further east just a little bit, but because it moves further east, it takes out the ability for there to be an exit ramp directly to Hector Drive. Hey Chris, wouldn't it also be probably better than getting off at 157 to uh, just get off at Main Street exit and then do the Texas U-turn? And that will absolutely be an option as well, yes, sir. Chris, thank you. Chris got the first demerit for talking without a mic. This young lady here got the second demerit. This Jennifer got the third demerit. Four demerits, I'm going home. So please try to, the, the best you can, give us time to get to you with a mic. But, uh, Chris did a good job. I appreciate you repeating so that I believe everybody at least heard the question. There are people standing at the back, especially ladies standing at the back. There are plenty of chairs that are still down here. And so it, you will not hurt our feelings if you just walk right on down here, wave as you're coming, find you a seat, get comfortable. I don't think we've exceeded fire marshal. We have not exceeded the occupancy load. That's because I've got a guy standing back there covering it up. So <laughs> <laughs> I know we're good for that standard. So now, Chris, were you just not talking correctly in that mic? Is my call is going to show you? Well, that's why I got all those awards. Because he's <laughs> we have another short presentation, 30, 40 minutes, a couple of hours. I'm not sure exactly how long. My college, Plains Development, is going to tell us about all the development that you might be seeing going on. Mike? Thank you. Is this working? Good. I figured it out. Yeah. If y'all have been attending or keeping up with council agendas over the last couple of years, your council's been very, very busy 
with approvals of different zoning ordinances impacting different development site plans that enable these projects to be built. It's just an incredible time from a development standpoint in this community and perhaps one of the things that makes it so cool is there's development activity everywhere. We've got residential development throughout the area south of Airport Freeway. We've got small business expansions with businesses that have been here 10 years, that have been here 40 years. Uh, sometimes it's kind of easy to focus perhaps on that Glade Parks retail development along 121 that we'll actually begin our presentation with uh, this evening. But, but one of the take home messages, it's really, really cool that it's just across the board in retail, in residential, in commercial, and small business growth. And it's just a real, real exciting time to be here. So I get the privilege of trying to give you a little bit of overview to give you a flavor of what that activity is. And if during this, y'all have got any questions before we move on to the next kind of development, just again, raise your hand and, and one of us will recognize you and just jump in and ask any questions that you might have. The Glade Parks development is obviously very, very important to our community. We're on the west side of 121, south of Glade Road, south of the Super Target. Um, it's certainly well underway in its construction. If you were to go out there, you can see what's been completed there on the southern portion of the inline retail with the Dick Sporting Goods. And then on the northern portion of it, I guess that's the Michaels, um, I believe. And then there's a little bit of a space to the north there for some additional retail. Um, but you got almost 300,000 square foot of new retail that is in there. And if you've been out there recently, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of the types of businesses that are locating out there, Five Guys Burgers, you got Pie Five and you got Panera Bread, and a whole host of other little retailers from Verizon and AT&T. If you were to drive towards, uh, what is it? Dave and Buster's on one end and then that inline retail, you can see a whole bunch of dirt work that's going on. They're doing a bunch of boring stuff that's really necessary to put in underground utilities and drainage. What they're doing though is they're going to construct what's going to be known as the Lifestyle Center. This is going to feature an area of about 40,000 square feet of a public plaza and bordering the public plaza on either side of it will be restaurants, with outdoor patios. So the area that's going to be created is you got that Dave and Buster's there currently on the south side. And then you're going to have Belk's department store that I've got a slide for here in a minute on the north side that will be right next to the Dick Sporting Goods. And then on the west side of this lifestyle area, which I'll also show you a slide up, is going to be a new movie theater. But this public plaza area is going to be a really, really neat uh, feature uh, to the development. It's really going to create a unique type of environment that we don't have in any of our commercial developments and really will be unique for Northeast Tarrant County. Uh, Belt Department Store is well under construction. Uh, they are really, really busy on their interior finish out. In fact, if I remember correctly, they're shooting for a March the 9th. March the 9th uh, grand opening. This was a really, really significant for the developer to be able to sign them as a lease. They were actually looking in the 35W corridor north of Fort Worth in the Alliance Airport corridor. Belt chose this area because they, of the economic development potential of the 121 corridor and this area of Northeast Tarrant County. And that really, really was a game changer for the developer in being able to secure some other end users that perhaps would not have gone here if Belt didn't make the decision to locate their department store here. As I mentioned, on the west side of that lifestyle area, it's going to be a new theater. I believe the pronunciation is Sinopolis. I've not been corrected by anybody that that's not. They're a company out of Mexico that's got theaters really in other parts of the world, and specifically the United States, they've got locations in California, Arizona, and Florida. They've got a location already approved in <coughs> Dallas at, is it Victory Park in the American Airlines area, whatever. This is their second location in Texas that's been approved. 
it's going to be this hybrid theater, 12 screens, I think is what they're going to be doing. Half of it is going to be the dining experience that you can order your meal and they'll serve you, whatever. And then the other half will be you can reserve your seat in advance and buy a ticket and like me, you just want to go in and watch a movie. Um, so it'll, be, it'll offer both those things for you. And then one of the newest restaurants that will be built there is a um, restaurant called Lazy Dog Restaurant and Bar. They've got their newest location that's been constructed is um, in Addison, off of the North Toll Road. Um, really, really neat restaurant. I would compare the quality of the food to a Cheesecake Factory, but not necessarily the prices of Cheesecake Factory. Um, what they're capitalizing on, there's a couple of restaurants in that are coming into the North Texas market that are catering to folks that want to bring their pet, in this instance, want to bring your dog to the restaurant. But let me be clear, you ain't bringing your dog inside of the main restaurant. What they've done here is they've segregated an outdoor patio area from the main dining, and there's all kinds of things that they do to make sure that those things are separated, and there's a whole bunch of health things that they've got to follow with the pets um, able to go into the outdoor patio area. But that's going to be a really, really nice addition to uh, Lake Parks and, and again, really, really good food.